You know, ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing like being in the green room. And we have a really special episode this evening because this is part two of a six-part series. But more importantly, you have the guest experts. You have folks who have taken time from their busy schedules to be here with you to share their best ideas and best secrets for you to live the life you've always deserved or live your best life or have more impact in the world or help your business grow. So with that being said, it's my honor and privilege to welcome the folks from the Comeback Champion Summit. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Doing great. Good, 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 good. <laughs> <laughs> They are here. They're ready. They're fired up to help you. So here's what I want to do. Um, I'm going to jump right into it, and I'm going to go over to Loretta. And I'm going to ask each of them, so you know who they are, to tell you their first name, their last name, where they're broadcasting in from, and let's find out what is their topic. So, Loretta, why don't we start with you, please? Oh, Shay, thank you so very much. My name is Loretta Wetzel, also known as Mama Soul Wisdom. I share old school wisdom for a new generation. I am broadcasting from Chi Town, the mm -hmm. Windy City. That's right, Chicago, Illinois. I'm a native Chicagoan, and I love being with Shay and all of the experts here because my topic is on something very near and dear to me. It's about entrepreneurship. So and the topic is about it, entrepreneurship or what is your keynote topic? Just entrepreneurship? Just give us the topic right now. What is the title? Do you remember? Sure. It's eight simple steps to start your business and monetize your gifts. Now, I love the title. We won't get into eight, obviously, during the time we have. But for folks that, um, let me ask a question. For the person that's a dualpreneur right now, they worked all day in their job. They come home, taking care of the family, and they're working all night as a dualpreneur in the evening. Why should they stop what they're doing right now? And that person may be in the kitchen washing dishes. They, they may be trying to do something and listen to this right now. Why should they tune in and hear what you have to say about entrepreneurship and having a profitable business? Absolutely. It's a great question because you want to be able to provide a competitive edge for your family. And the only way to do that is to start your own business. It is easier now than ever to be able to work from home. You need a laptop or an iPad, good internet, and a mobile phone, and you could start your own business. You know, you can start your own business. I'm wondering as, as Jim and Michelle are over there listening about just starting your own business, um, even during these, these times, uh, the times that we're in right now, uh, what's going through your mind, Jim or Michelle, as you're listening to Loretta speak over there? You're right, Loretta. Um, when, when it comes to becoming an entrepreneur, now's a great time. Uh, there is, you have a captive audience. Literally, there is a captive audience out there waiting to hear uh, all about what services and what products you have to provide. So this is a great time. Um, and the, the other thing is uh, there's lots of opportunities out there to not only reach your ideal customer, but to, to collaborate with some other folks. Mm -hmm. And it's a great time to, to start up a business. I love it. True. When we go on the other side, don't worry. I'm going to have Loretta start off, and we're going we're gonna to ask her, what's the challenge of everyone starting their business? And everyone says it's so easy. When we go on the other side, we're going to ask her that. We're in, the, we're in the green room. We can ask any questions we want, but don't worry. I'm going to ask her that question when we start off. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, let the folks know uh, who are your first, last name, where you're broadcasting in from, and what's your keynote topic? Yes, my name is Art Berlanga. They call me Coach B, and I am broadcasting from Salinas, California, here in the Monterey County, Central California. And... My topic is leadership that wins. Leadership that wins. Now, for the person that's listening again, and I don't want to you know, sound like a wet blanket. It's like, here we go with leadership. Here we go with winning again. I mean, I'm, everybody wants to be a winner. Who wants to be a loser? I don't know anybody wants to be a loser. So, so, so take a moment in all seriousness. Take about 90 seconds and uh, share with us, you know, why did you select this topic and, and why is it important now more than ever? You know, I, I love that question because I think as of today, I think leadership was more apparent than ever before with the social climate, with the political climate. Leadership was never more essential or apparent 
than the times we're going through today, right? Even within our families, within our occupation, our career path, whatever that may be, leadership truly was in the forefront as far as were you able, were you in a effective, an exceptional leader, or were you a leader who kind of struggled and realized, man, maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you one, one last question, and I'm going to ask Loretta what she's thinking, but um, give us one leadership skill that's important. I, I know you got a whole topic you'll be talking about on the other side, okay? But uh, leadership means different things to different folks, okay? So if there was one skill that, you know, every leader should have, what's the one skill? And I know it's unfair, but in 90 seconds or less, what's the one skill and why? <laughs> I'll have to say lead by example. I think for my father, for my family, it doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't matter if you're a CEO, you're a manager at, a, at the local restaurant, or if you're a superintendent of a school district or a teacher within a classroom. If you do not lead by example, that is a number one way to lose credibility, right? Number one way to lose credibility, lead by example. Mm, lead by l example. Loretta's shaking her head over there. And Loretta, um, what are you thinking right now when you hear lead by example? Mm -hmm. Oh, I absolutely agree with her. It is the number one rule that you want to abide by because people will follow you in your behavior and what you do, maybe not necessarily what you say. So you must always be on point and lead by example. Be on point. Lead by example. I love it. I can't wait to get on the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the green room, by the way. We're going over to Jim and Michelle. They're there smiling, by the way. They know what's coming up right now. They know. You want to know who are they? I did say their first names, obviously. Um, you want to know where they're broadcasting in from, so they can give a shout out. But second and more importantly, what is their keynote topic and why is it important? Talk to us, please. Sure. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jim. We're from a Teague of Your Own. We are in... Just outside of Pittsburgh, outside Pennsylvania, of Pittsburgh. where yeah. it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually live in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. So that's why it's always a beautiful day in our neighborhood. Uh, our topic is achieving fulfillment, aligning your purpose, vision, and goals with your core values, and how important it is to make sure that those core values do line up with what it is that you do, uh, because if they're out of alignment, you're not really going to be fulfilled. You're not going to feel like you've accomplished anything when you do meet those goals. What does fulfilled mean? I mean, I'm just curious, by the way. You know, you said be fulfilled. So we're all on the same page. I know you'll do a deep dive on the other side. But the first question mm -hmm. I mean, somebody in mind is, well, what does fulfilled even mean? If I got my purpose over here and my passion, what, 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 does, what, what is Michelle and Jim's definition of fulfilled? Sure. Well, what, for us, fulfillment means that you're, you're doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. When you're on the right track, when your purpose and your vision, your goals align with those core values, then you are, you're going to sleep better at night. Uh, you're going to know that you're out there helping people and you're, you'll receive fulfillment from that. It's that, that, that feeling that you get inside of you, knowing that you have helped people and you've given your all and you've done what you can to make the world a better place. Love it. Um, Art, what say you about this whole fulfillment? And, and you're looking at a couple, I mean, they did say from a T of their own, but that's their last name, by the way. So you got a couple <laughs> on the other side that's working together and Art, as you're, as you're looking at them work together and support each other and be here together. And they're talking about fulfilled. I, I'm just curious, man, what are, you, what are you thinking over there? I think we, I think we cannot experience fulfillment or being fulfilled if it if it's not for service, right? I think every fulfillment, everybody experiences that gratitude, right? That self, just an involvement of serving and helping others, that's where that fulfillment comes from. I, I don't think I've ever met anyone that was, when it was all about me, mm -hmm. when that ran out, but when they gave to others and they served others, how fulfilling mm -hmm. that is. And it's a lifetime journey, right? It's a lifetime accomplishment that you can continue to do. And it's, it, your gas tank is always full, when it comes to that type of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get on the other side. We're going to learn about having a profitable business. We're going to learn about how to be fulfilled. And then we got Art is going to close it out. It's going to be talking about, you know, how do you win in this world and not be a loser? I think that was it. He'll give us a title <laughs> on the other side. I, I can't wait because I know all of you are winners. You're already champions. You're here right now. So we got a show to get going. I wish I could do this right now. Therese, Dr. Teresa Mosley is out there. She says hello. Mira's out there. Hey, what are you doing up? She's out there right now. Calvin's out there. My good friend down in Whitbridge, Virginia. I gave you a shout out, my man. In the house, Beth, I see you in Atlanta. So many folks are tuned in right now. I promise we got a show. I promise they will change your life.
if you let them. They brought their best. We'll be back in five. We got a show. Four. I love doing this. Three, two, one. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. I made to my mom. I only did this message for one person, and that's my mom. This is for you, mom. Love you. My name is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, check. Shay Brown. My check, my check. All I do is we win, we win, we no matter what. Man. Got money on my mind, Man. I can never Man. get enough. And every time I step Man. up in the building, yeah. everybody yes. hands go up. Yes. Yeah. And they stay there. Happy Entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission really is to provide you, that's right, you, the entrepreneur, with all of those resources that are necessary to execute the big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And almost every episode, I not only remind myself, but I'd like to remind everyone while we're here that I believe that folks have three visions. Now, it doesn't matter which one you're working on, but I believe you have a vision for yourself, and there's certain food that you want to eat. There's certain stamina that you want to have. There's a certain lifestyle you would love, and it takes resources to make that a reality. We'll talk about that. For others of you, you have a vision for your loved ones. Got to spend some time today with Mother Dear. She's only 15 minutes away. She got to order from Uber Eats. Now, she's good at Amazon. And now she's good at Uber Eats, and you know what a credit card is connected to, by the way. And so she ordered today, and it was a lot of fun doing that. And some of you want to write a check for a cause you believe in. Some of you want to send your kids to a school of your choice. And some of you want to just help out a neighbor and, and make sure they're okay. And it takes revenue. It takes resources to make it all a reality. Then the third vision, I think, is, is probably why you're here. It's to serve humanity. You have a goal much bigger than yourself. And in order for you to achieve that goal, it takes resources. And I always like to say the goal you have for the people you were called to serve, the example I always use is Noah in the Bible. And I know it's an example that's used often, but imagine that you're Noah and you've got this vision given by God. You, you've got the expertise. You've got everything you need, all your experience, all your life lessons. And right before Noah was to get going, imagine there was a knock at the door, like boom, boom, boom. And someone yelled, yo, Noah. They did say yo back in the day. I want to be very, very clear with that. <laughs> uh, yo, Noah, we got a problem, man. There's, there's no hammers in the house. Noah doesn't panic. And then there's another knock at the door. Boom, boom, boom. And someone yells, shorty. They did say shorty back in the day. I want you to know that as well. We got a problem, Noah. Sure, we got a problem. There. There's no nails. And then there's someone in the back, and they're just waving. Back here, Noah, me, 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 over here. And he says, what's going on? He's not worried, he's not panicking. And the person says, well, there's no people to put the boat together and there's no wood. Good luck on this mission. And maybe that's you. This morning, this evening, this afternoon, Loretta, Art, Jim, Michelle, they all came together to give you the research, resources that you need to execute the vision that's much bigger than you. So let me welcome all to the Happy Entrepreneur Show. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Woo! <laughs> Push out a little energy so I can feel a little show love. Show I can feel love. And as they're doing that, they're doing that for all of you that are at home right now. You might be wondering, why should I tune in? Because they're going to change your life. We're going to start off with the one and only Loretta. And I'm going to ask Loretta once again just to tell the folks her name, because you might not have been in the green room, where she's broadcasting in from, and her keynote topic. Talk to us, Loretta. What is it? Well, thank you, Shay. My name is Loretta Wetzel, also known as Mama Soul Wisdom. I share old school wisdom from a new generation, and I am broadcasting live from the Windy City, Shy town That's right. I'm a native Chicagoan, and my topic is eight simple steps to start your business and monetize your gifts. Everybody has natural skills, talents, and gifts, and it's up to you to monetize those gifts 
by starting a business and getting paid. All right, so take a moment and tell us what's the number one challenge or one of the biggest challenges is facing someone out there. They want to start a business. They want to generate extra income. They want to take care of their family. They want to give back. Uh, what's one of the challenges that folks are faced with today just starting a business? There are actually two primary challenges, but the biggest challenge is the most important real estate there is, and that's the six inches between your ears. That's the biggest challenge because most people don't believe that they can actually work from home. You just need three things, a laptop, good internet, and a mobile phone, and you can find a business to work from home. The conditions are great to do that, and you can thank the pandemic for uh, opening, helping to open up those doors. More and more people are now working from home. As a matter of fact, there are 5.5 million businesses in America today that are small business, and they account for 57% of America's gross domestic product, or GDP. And small businesses represent 65% of the workforce. So there are more of us out there than you think you might as well jump on in and get to that. Okay, so what's the first step that you would give someone uh, like myself and they're sitting around or, or Art over there or Jim or anyone that says, okay, what's the first step that I've taken for you at home right now? Uh, do me a favor, hit the share button. D hit the share button, uh, hit the watch party button. Uh, pay this message forward to your community. We believe in the giver's economy. The person that out gives the competition, out earns the competition. The person that just out gives the competition, out earns the competition. But Loretta, um, before you answer the other question, take a moment for folks that don't know who you are. And they might be wondering, sounds good, but uh, Shay, what's her origin story? Can she take two minutes and kind of tell us how she knows this to be true? Oh my goodness. Well, I tell you, I am a family entrepreneur expert. I help families start businesses. But I actually spent many of my professional years in both nonprofit and for profit. My last position, I worked for a major airline as a senior human resource executive, um, earning, and they paid me very well. I earned over six, uh, six figures, I had killer benefits. So I worked in corporate America, and at the time, I didn't really think about starting my own business. But here's the thing. They don't tell you about the 60 and 70 hour work weeks. They don't tell you about the times when you have to be away from your family. I had an hour and a half, an hour and a half commute each way on a good weather day, plus having to work weekends. So what I sacrificed was time away from my family. And I had, I didn't even realize it was on top of me that my kids had started to raise themselves. Not a good thing. Okay. Then in 2010, I was impacted by a layoff. So when you go from six figures to zero figures, you got to figure out something real quick. I had two kids in college with out of state tuition. And I really thought I was going to have to tell my babies they were going to have to come home and leave their dreams behind because I couldn't afford to pay the bill. This is when I discovered entrepreneurship. And it allowed me to have control of my time. It allowed me to generate income. It allowed me to pay the tuition so my babies could graduate from college. Most importantly, it gave me the freedom that I was looking for to spend time with my family. Now, here's what I would recommend. Two things. Number one, find out where your, your skill intersects with your passion. Because some people will say, well, yeah, I'd like to start a, a new business, but I don't know where to start. That's the first thing. You want to look for where your skills intersect with your passion. And that'll give you a clue 
of what you would be able to do and to sell, and people will gladly pay you for it in exchange and value. But here's the second thing I would recommend. You want to find a coach. You want to find someone that has made the mistakes that you don't want to make, right, to save you time, money, energy. So you definitely need an entrepreneur coach that's going to help guide you in your business. And those are the two things that I would recommend. Mm. By the way, I uh, not only have one business, I have multiple businesses, a real estate investing and marketing business. I am a partner with my husband, who is uh, an accountant, and we have a, an accounting firm that specializes in small businesses. And I also have a life coaching business to help parents become entrepreneurs involving their families. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. I love what I do. And two out of those three businesses, I am also partner with my husband, and we've been together 41 years. So we, we years. love give it. Her hand. 41 years. Let's give her a little love there. 41 years. Congratulations. Boy, that's a, that's a business by itself. Good Lord. Congratulations to you. Um, take about 90 seconds, if you would, and, and share with all the successes you've had. Uh, what's one setback that you've had along this journey as a business owner? And what was the lesson you learned from that that any of us listening right now can take away from it? We heard the accolades, and that's, that's cool, but they might be wondering, golly, I, on this long journey she's had, was there ever a time where there was a setback for her? And if it was, what was that setback? Yes. So here's the setback. Setback in, in being an entrepreneur is that you're going to encounter them on a frequent basis. And so I don't know if you've ever heard of this book. Uh, it's called Three Feet from Gold. Mm -hmm. And because yeah, you, you're going to be right there, right there in the goal that you wanted to achieve. And then you almost quit. So my very first real estate deal that I executed, I didn't know anything about real estate investing. I had to learn. And I had to learn very quickly. And I made some mistakes along the way, even though I had a supporting team. And I almost quit. But I didn't. And because I didn't quit, even though I had bumps in the road, the title report revealed some liens that had to be paid that I didn't anticipate. And there were some other things that happened in the real estate deal, but I didn't quit. When you finish, because champions finish, champions always come back. That one real estate deal, I earned a net profit of $80,000. Results are not typical. A lot of people don't earn $80,000 on a real estate deal. So let me be clear. But when I did it and I finished it, I was able to receive that result. I was so thankful that as a champion, I did not quit. Mm, did not quit. You know, what do you, what do you say as you listen to her, Michelle or Jim, what's going through your mind about just, just not quitting? Just, just the whole idea of just not quitting, even in a marriage. I mean, 41 years, I'm sure there were some other things that were going on at the same time, but let's talk about the business. When she said, I did not quit. <laughs> I should say that's not a joke. It's very serious. The relationships are very serious. I'm on my third marriage, so I'm very happy. Um, but <laughs> Nothing to do with the show. It has nothing to do with anyone else for 41 years. Um, but when she said you, she did not quit, and I know you'll be coming up in just a moment, Jim and Michelle, and you'll be talking about fulfillment and so forth. Um, but what's resonating with you with what you're hearing from Loretta right now? God bless you, Loretta. Uh, 41 years. That, that's awesome. We've been married for 20, almost 24 years now. Right. And uh, you're right. You, you have to have uh, the mentality you you have to have the the drive you have to want the success you have to be able to picture that success and uh, one of the books that that we both enjoy is as a man thinketh mm -hmm. and that's part uh, of what you you read in that book is getting in that right mindset because what you think is what you become and uh, if you think that you're a quitter, that's what you're going to become. Uh, 
Um, and if you think you're successful, that's what you're going to become. Yeah. And part of that is, it goes along with our topic. Uh, once you know what it is that you're, you're after, once you understand where you're coming from, then the thought of quitting doesn't even enter your mind mm -hmm. there, you, you, because you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. And so the idea that I, I'm, I'm not going to do this just because I've had a setback, it never enters your mind if you're in the right place. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I know, Art, you're, you're coming up after Jim and Michelle, and you'll be talking about the whole winner's mindset. But when you heard those words, I did not quit, um, the audience is thinking, hey, what was on the coach's mind over there? And Loretta, don't worry. We'll be coming back to you in just a second. Loretta got more. Okay, she got eight. We can't get to all eight, <laughs> but she got more. Got so you <laughs> just hang in there. She showed up to change your life, and she's going to fulfill that commitment. But, Art, when you, when you heard that, like, I just didn't quit. You know, what were you thinking, man? I can't help but think about all the successful people from my mentors, from people I follow. Everyone has reached a, a time of their life where those thoughts came into their head on a continuous basis, right? Self-doubt, not enough belief in themselves. So they borrow somebody else's belief until they have their own belief, right? And the not quit thing. So I'm an educator I'm a, and I'm a football coach. So I deal with kids all the time have that mindset of, man, is this my life or I can't do it? They talk themselves out of doing things rather than talk themselves into doing things, right? So that's that constant battle within our mind. So when I, when I hear those words, I didn't quit. Everyone who's ever been successful, they don't focus on the negative, but rather they focus on the positive. It's not that they don't experience negative thoughts. They do, but they refuse to focus on those things. Refuse to focus on those things. Uh, Loretta, um, I want to give you the final 90 seconds, and we'll be coming back to you, I know, to just share just one other nugget. You're like, gosh, I've got eight, but here's just one more that I want to leave the audience with for the folks that's thinking, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want additional revenue, or more importantly, I've got some gifts that I can use to really serve others, Shay. And what's one more idea that Loretta would share with me? So, Loretta, talk to us. Yeah, sure. One idea that I have is you really want to look like a business. That's a really broad topic. I will not be able to cover everything tonight on that. But looking like a business helps you pass the sniff test. So be sure that you have an email address that is professional in the name of your business. Be sure that you people can find you online. Now, for credibility purposes, hear me very clearly. Some people say, well, I can create a website and make sales. And chances are there's a lot more that comes with that. But you got to be searchable these days. People want to find you so that you, you are credi credible. You want to have a business checking account. You don't want to mix your business income with your personal income. So you've got to look like a business. Get a business phone number. It's so easy these days with all the apps. Back in the day, you had to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to get Ma Bell to install a second line. That's old school. No, we don't do that anymore. You can get apps that will allow you to have a second line. So when you're in the grocery store shopping and you want to know whether it's a personal call or it's a business call, which voice you're using, you can tell the difference. So these are all the things that are accessible and fairly inexpensive that you can do to help you look like a business says so well thank you so much i can't wait to come back and learn more about what you're doing and how you're making a bigger difference in the world so i'm super excited about that by the way so thank you so much for all that you're doing appreciate that we're gonna go over now to to jim and michelle or michelle and jim and um take a moment if you would and, and tell them your your full name so they know who you are tell them where mm -hmm. you're broadcasting in from and, and and what's your topic sure i'm michelle teague 
And I'm Jim Teague. And we're from a Teague of your own. We are just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And like I, I like to tell everybody, it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood because we are in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Um, and it's always a beautiful day here. Uh, our topic is achieving fulfillment. Um, aligning your purpose, your vision, and your goals with your core values. And uh, we actually have a question for, for you three. And our question is, do you know what your core values are? Do you know what matters to you? Do you know what you stand for? Mm, when she asks that question, we have a question for you, which is define what core values mean. I mean, we, uh -huh. so, so the audience listens. Well, that's a good question. Well, what is their definition of core values? And give uh -huh. us an example. See, they're with uh -huh. us. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> uh, so your, your your core values are going to be they they truly are what matters to you. This is what makes you up. These are the things that are non negotiable in your life. Yes. Um, these are the things that you believe in. Uh, what you stand for. And for me, um, uh, one of the things that we do f with our our customers, uh, whether we're coaching them or, or training them, is we ask them to determine what their top five core values are. And, and for me, it, it's growth, competence, efficiency, achievement, and integrity. Uh, those are my top five core values. They are non-negotiable. Can, can you say those again just a little slower for the audience, please? Sure. Uh, in fact, I can show you. Uh, we've got growth, competence, efficiency, achievement, and integrity. Now, now you Those have five there, and they're all very important. If someone said, wow, Shay, there's unequals amongst equals, so that means that all things aren't always created equal, and there's five That's there. Um, of those five, and they're all mm -hmm. important, if you had to pick they one are. that's most important to you, which one would you pick and, and, and why? Now, they're all important, but I said sometimes <laughs> there's unequals amongst equals. Now, you're advanced, so I know you'll be able to handle this. And give us an example of it. Sure. For me, it's integrity. Ah. Uh, and, and that's because if you don't have integrity, no – nobody's going to be able to trust you. And when it comes to building relationships with people, they need to be able to trust that you are going to do what you say you're going to do. They need to be able to trust that uh, you are who you say you are. And integrity encompasses that trust. It, it's shows people that you are willing to help them out, that you're willing to build up that relationship and you're willing to, uh, like I said, do what you say you're going to do. So for me, that would be my top core value. Mm, I, I love it. Now, what, what do you say when someone, someone lets you down um, and you talk about feeling, fulfilling your purpose and passion and you talk about integrity being important. So how should someone respond and, and maybe that's happened to you. Maybe it's never happened. Maybe there was a time or a story you can share where you trusted a, a process or a system and it, it didn't work out the way you wanted it to. And it kind of let you down, but you were able to bounce back from it. And it don't have to be integrity. It could be any one of the core values. Um, but what was the time that there was a setback and uh, from that core value perspective, but you were able to bounce back from it? And as you're doing that, don't worry. Art and Loretta will share one of their core values. I don't know what it is, but they know what it is. Don't worry. They're listening very intently. And they'll be coming on in just a second and kind of sharing what's one of their core values. You gave five. They don't have time for that, but they will have one. Okay, talk to us. So uh, much like Loretta, uh, I, I worked in corporate America. I was a corporate trainer for many years, and I was laid off. Uh, much like Loretta was talking about, I was laid off from my job. And uh, there was the this sense of uh, how I had trusted I had trusted my employer and uh, they let me go. Um, so that was, and it was hard. Uh, first and foremost, you take it very personally, even though it's one of those corporate decisions, it's a business decision. You know, there, there, I wasn't the only person that was laid off. There were several hundred of us who were at the time. So it wasn't just me, but you take it personally. You think to yourself, you know, what did I do wrong? Why did they choose me? Why is this happening to me? And within the matter of hours, I changed that around to this is an opportunity. 
this is going to be an opportunity for me to to go in a different direction and to do something different, uh, to go find another uh, either to, to go and I ended up working for another company, uh, but I could find something and I could do something different and I could take the experience that I had and I could use it to improve our life um, mm-hmm. uh, and our, our family's life, but also improve the lives of other people that I was going to be working with. And that's what I did. I went out and I found a new job. I was still a trainer. Uh, I put together new programs and I helped build culture within a, a company that really lacked it. Uh, I, I went to work for a company that had turnover rates that were well over 50, 60 percent turnover rates, which Loretta's probably shaking her head right now thinking, oh, goodness gracious, as an HR person, that that sounds awful. And it was. And that's because there was no culture there within the, the company. So I created a new higher orientation program and an onboarding program that created an actual culture for those new employees that was very supportive, that gave them the opportunity to learn from a mentor, and I would pair them up with somebody to help them through that process, and really decreased the turnover rate within that that company and put this program in place so that people understood what they were getting themselves into, um, but they also understood what they did and how they contributed to the organization, that they were a piece of that puzzle. And without them there, what would happen? You, you Literally on the wall, I would have them um, in my training room. I had a wall full of puzzle pieces. And the very first day of orientation, I would give them a puzzle piece and ask them to write down a word of one of the skills that they were bringing with them to the job and to decorate their puzzle piece. And then I would put those puzzle pieces up on the wall. And it was a reminder that all of us together created this company. All of us brought something to the company. All of us were different though. I mean, you could have some of the exact same skills, but those puzzle pieces were all decorated differently. And it was a great visual and a great reminder of how people come together to build something better than themselves and how much they can get out of it because of what they're putting into it. You know, I always love your your heart. I love how you speak. Perfect example. I see it now. I'm feeling it. Everyone can... Everyone can feel both you and, and Jim's heart right now. It's like beating like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and you paint a vivid picture. And I've had a, an opportunity to hang out with you for now in a little bit of time. And I, I, I just love and enjoy uh, when all of you talk. But I love the stories. Um, Loretta, we'll go to you first. We'll give you about 60 seconds. I know you're ready to share your core value and why it's important. And then we'll go to Art to uh, share one of your core values and mm-hmm. why it's important. And you at home. You, you at home, you can look right below the video and you can write your core value. You at home can hit the share button and you can pay this message for it. We believe in the giver's economy. Help another entrepreneur, help another single mom or a single dad or a little boy or a little girl or someone out there that's tuned in that's listening right now. And this message is exactly what they need for where they are right now. All right, Loretta, you heard us speaking. You heard the questions. What's one of your core values and why? Oh, yes. And I so relate with you, Michelle. It's when I learned my very first lesson of never love anything that doesn't love you back. Mm -hmm. Some people do very well in corporate America and it's a give and take and they have that flexibility. But then if you find yourself in a situation where you're constantly giving, 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 never love anything that doesn't love you back. Now, as far as the core value is concerned, I absolutely agree. Integrity is at the top of my list. And it's not from a moral standpoint, because sometimes people kind of fall into that judgment, right, wrong trap. It's really about if you do what you say you're going to do, then pretty soon your life looks like what you say it looks like. Mm, Yes. I'm going to let y'all marinate on that a little bit. Love that. Yeah. (laughs) See, because there's a whole lot of 
people that's out and they're fluffing and buffing and you know you got the apps where you can fix things and you know you, you're not so sure about what's real and what's not Mm-hmm. But one thing, with integrity, you're going to honor your word. You do what you say you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And pretty soon, your life looks like what you say it looks like. Now, that doesn't mean that sometimes that you don't have oopsies or things don't go the way that you expect them to go. The key to that is communication. And mm-hmm. you clean it up. You don't have that other person come chase you down. Mm -hmm. You come to the plate and say, look, I said I was going to do this. I'm acknowledging I didn't do it. uh, And I want to know what that impact is on you. And here's what I'm going to do moving forward in the future. So you are acknowledging because let's face it, we're human. I mean, that's super powerful. You got a core value. Again, you can, they're, they're oozing out. Like, I, I feel bad just kind of <laughs> jumping in, but they're oozing out over here. All right, you're listening to them over there. Uh, you heard integrity is one of them. What's, what's one of your core values and why? And don't worry, we're going to close it out and go back over to Jim and Michelle. And I know Michelle gave her core value. I don't know if Jim gave his. I couldn't remember now. Michelle, if, oh, yeah. his wife is telling him, no, he did not give his. So don't <laughs> worry, Jim will not feel left out. He will not feel left out. And he can pass if he wants, obviously. But if you want to share your core value, Jim, you're, you're welcome to do that. We come back to you and Michelle. Okay, uh, Art. She asked a question to us and everybody. Kind of, what's your core value? What's what's one of your core values? First word that popped to my head was was service. It takes no talent, it takes no skill to serve. When you serve your wife, she's gonna be pretty happy, right? So, for example, I wake up every morning. I get up. I'm an early bird, so I get my wife a cup of coffee. Or if I have to leave early to work, which I often do, I'll leave the the mug under the the Keurig waiting for her as she wakes, right? So, service. I serve students on a daily basis. I, I serve student athletes on a daily basis. I serve a current head coach I'm working under in the game of football on a daily basis. Why? Because I know what I put out, I'm going to get back, right? So service is huge. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what your economic status is. It does not matter. Service (laughs) takes no skill or talent. Mm, I love it. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, Back over to Jim and Michelle. And, uh, you know, as we come down the segment, we'll be hearing from Art. He'll be coming up next. Um, Jim, I mean, Jim, sorry. Jim, yeah, yeah, Jim. Jim, would you like to kind of share what um, maybe your core value is and why? Sure, sure, sure. Thanks, Che. Actually, um, yeah, I have the same thing with Michelle there. We have the, the five, and I'll tell you what my most important one of, of my five. Mine are different than hers, though. Oh, okay, yeah. well, let's do yours, too. Let's, I'm, I'm well, so mine's different. different I, I, I didn't think. I mean, you know, I know it's your wife, but I know you have your own way of thinking, too. I mean, come yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. We have one in common of our top five, but mine are a little bit different. So my my first one is independence. I really value my independence and my ability to do the things that I want to do, the things that make me happy, the things that bring me fulfillment. Fitness is another big one for me. And obviously, you can see I'm... I'm you know, here in this sling, had to have shoulder surgery, and that's part of keeping myself fit and healthy. And I will bounce back stronger and better than ever. Hey. Fun. Yeah. I like having fun. And for me, it's one of those things. If I can't have fun doing what I'm doing, I just as soon not do it. And I find that I have a lot of fun in serving other people, helping other people, making other people's lives better. Achievement. I like to achieve my goals. And that's part of, again, what we, our topic is setting those goals and achieving those goals. And it always you know, brings that sense of fulfillment when we're able to do that. And then the one that I think is the most important for me, my top value, and I think you need this if you're going to succeed in life, and that's courage. I think it's so important that you have the courage to be able to step out when you want to start your own business, to have that to put that fear aside and to go for it. And then, you know, part of that comes from my background. I've worked as a, a medic. I did that for three years when I was in college. That's how I paid my way through college. I served time in the military. And you have to have courage when you're involved in those sorts of activities. And so that is my top value is courage. Courage said so well. Thanks so much, Michelle. He's like, I got it, Michelle. I'm ready to rock and roll. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I love it. Courage. And I love the fun. Isn't that what life is all about? You only have one life, so you might as well enjoy it, right? Enjoy every moment of every minute of every day. Thanks so much for sharing. I can't wait to hear more from both you and Michelle. Um, Art, um, you're up next, man. The folks that are watching, they're listening, they're curious. You know, you kind of kicked this thing off about winners or losers. I can't remember the topic, but tell us if you can, your first name, last name, where you're broadcasting from in your keynote topic. All right. Art Berlanga, they call me Coach B. I'm broadcasting from Salinas, California, here in the Monterey County in the Salinas Valley, Central California, in the 831. And my topic is leadership that wins. Oh, leadership that's right. That it was leadership that wins. Leadership yeah. that wins, not leadership that loses. Okay. So take a moment <laughs> and, and unpack it for us, for those folks that are listening, please. Uh, uh, leadership that wins. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I have three points I'm going to share that will ignite your team, ignite your business or corporation or any group of people that you lead, even in your in your own household is number one. I'm going to talk about lead by example, as I mentioned earlier. My number two principle when it comes to leadership that wins is taking care of each other, taking care of your team, taking care of your 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 group. Right. Everyone lo loves to talk about we're like family. I, I don't want to be like family. I want to be family. Right. There's a big difference between the two. And then the third. Well, I love that. You can't you, you can't just leave us hanging and say there's a difference between the two and not tell us what the difference is. I mean, you're like, I don't want to be like family. I want to be the family. There is a difference. They're sitting on the cliff right now. So I mean, I, I'll give you an extra minute here, but you got to slow down for a second and then speed up. When you say I don't want to be like family, but I want to be the family. What does that mean? It means this. When I think about my children, and they make make mistakes along the way, and they don't they, they disappoint me as their father, right? As their parent, am I just gonna fire them? Am I gonna disown them? No, I'm not. I'm gonna give them all the resources and support to make sure that they do a better job to learn from that mistake. Same thing as a boss or a manager or a leader of a group or a group of people. If I want to treat you like family or be my family, I see you as my family. I want to make sure I'm there for you through the goods and through the bads. That's the difference. Mm, okay, continue on, continue on. I, I, I like that. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm, I guess I'm smelling what you're cooking in the kitchen over there. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you right now. So, okay, you gave us number one. You gave us number two, but you said you had three. We didn't forget. We're still listening now. We're, we're, we're listening. We're with you. Talk to us. The third one, self-reflection. As a leader, we have to be constantly self-assessing, self-reflecting on you as a leader because attitude reflects leadership. So if the attitude of the room, of the group that you lead, is a negative, self-defeating, discouraged group, well, that's a, that's a reflection of you. Just like our spouses. If, I, my, if my spouse walks around with her head down, in, insecure, defeated, right, that's a reflection of me as a spouse. No, my wife's going to walk around bold, secure, confident. Same principles I hold within my own marriage, I want to lead my group of people the exact same way. You, know, you led a football team. You've, you've been the head coach. You've supported coaches. Uh, you've done a lot. Take a moment, if you would, and tell us about you know a time where things didn't go the way you wanted them to go, and <laughs> there was a challenge. There was a setback. As we were like, "Wow, this this guy got it going on." I mean, maybe he, he do not have to worry about that. Leadership always wins. But but tell us about a time where things didn't go the way they wanted them to. How did you? respond and what was the lesson you learned that you're going to share with all of us that are that are watching and listening right now I'm, I'm a 30 I'm 38 years old so when I first played my first organized sport I was 10 so I've 28 years I've been under some kind of leader mm -hmm. following a leader listening to a leader ever since I was born even in my mother's womb right I, I had some kind of leader a parent to show me the way so when I think about a setback Che, I think about the, the time I had this dream to play college football. And where I'm from in my family, that wasn't really a reality just because of the, the, just the dynamic where I'm from. I'm, I'm a second-generation American. My, my father's from Mexico. My mom's from the island of Guam. And neither of them played a college sport, right? So, And none of, none of them either graduated from college. So I had this dream of playing a college sport. So I'm playing football, and I'm doing, I have a pretty decent career going on, and I'm building a name for myself. And I get hurt. I get injured. I, I have chronic dislocations in my shoulder. I look just I look just like Jim, all right? I look just like Jim multiple times, okay? So that set me back a bit because I was like, man, is this it? Is this is this for me, right? So that self-doubt, right, the discouragement really took hold of my mind, right, and my emotions. 
But I said, no, get in the back. I told my emotions, get in the back of the line. I ain't going to let you win. I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to become even better. Just as Jim mentioned earlier, I'm going to come back stronger and better. And that's what I did. And I was able to fulfill that dream of mine. And not only played, played college football, but I was also a multi-sport college athlete. I also did track and field at the same time. So, yes, that was a setback, and I was able to over, overcome that. But, but, again, I have to give credit to the people I surrounded myself with, right? Like-minded people who really encouraged me to get up and not feel sorry for myself because I've learned. I've learned. I heard Les Brown say this one time. 80% of people don't care about what we go through. And the other 20%, they're happy it's happening to you instead of them, right? <laughs> so there we go. He was ready. I love that. That's good. That's right. That was good. That's good. Um, Loretta, what's what's going through your mind right now? Wow. I'm like, champions, they're going to have some setbacks. You're going to go through some valleys. If you zero to 50, well, stay tuned because you still got some living to do. When you go through valleys, you come up on the other side. That's what matters. And so even though your parents aren't, they didn't know anything about playing professional sports, but you were determined to play. And regardless of the setbacks, regardless of the injuries, you achieved that. And that's really what it's all about because those skills are transferable to other areas in your life. And you did exactly that. So champions, oh yeah, you're going to go through some valleys. But you know what? You get up, you dust yourself off, and you keep moving forward. Yeah, champions always come back. Jim, what's going through your mind? Or Michelle, what, what's going through your mind? Go ahead. Uh, I, I, I agree. Champions do always come back, and that's because you reach down within yourself, mm -hmm. and you find the strength to, to move yourself forward. Um, you don't give up. And that's the thing. Uh, you may be down, but you're not down for the count. You may be, you know, struggling, but you are going to do everything that you can to pull yourself up, stand up and make forward progress and get back into the game and become a winner. And that's that's what you're talking about there is to keep going. Yeah, that's just you're you're overcoming obstacles. As as that wise sage Paul Stanley from the rock band Kiss said, obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off of the goal. Mm, said so well. All right, as you're sitting over there, um, you know, folks may be listening as they're tuning in right now, and they might be wondering, you know, Shay, when it comes to a winner's mindset, if Art had two minutes and he wanted to pass a, a word of wisdom on. Um, and you could open up the minds right now of someone, and you could drop in. I got the leadership wins, but you just want to implant some winner's mindset knowledge on their brain right now. We're going to just give you two minutes. Now, I'm sure Art can handle this, ladies. He'll be fine. Don't worry about it. But we're all curious. Like, Loretta scooting up over there saying, oh, okay, Shay. Look at it. You put him on the spot. Yeah. But I have full confidence that you at home can hit the share button right now. We'll give him a second to get himself together. I have full confidence if you hit that share button right now and you pay this message forward to someone else right now who's doing really, really well but want to go to the next level, or maybe they have had a setback and they're ready to come back stronger, but they just need the winner's mindset. And the message that Art's going to share, no pressure, will help along this journey. So, Art, we're going to give you two minutes to um, take some time and, and speak to the person right now it's listening to stop what they were doing. They stopped scrolling. They hit the share. They copied the message. They just pasted it forward, and they're waiting to hear you now. Take it away, my man. Persistence, mm -hmm. perseverance kind of relate to one another. I think the, I believe they're synonyms, right? Yeah. Going forward regardless of circumstances, regardless of the result of failure. And I've learned, as I've learned from my mentors and other people, and this has been said many times before, but I love how Confucius put it. Our greatest glory is not never falling, but rising every time we do fall. So when it comes to have that mentality of a winner, to have that winner, winners don't give up. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. They might lay down a while. As Les Brown said, if I fall, I'm going to make sure I fall on my back so I can look up, I can get up, right? So that's the thing is, is oftentimes I think that's what separates the good from the great mm -hmm. is 
they don't give up. They don't quit regardless of circumstances, right? Rocky Balboa said it best. Rocky Balboa said it best. Life is going to hit us hard. But it ain't about how, how hard life can, can hit. It's about how hard he can get hit and keep moving forward. How much he can take and keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. I love it. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for, and thanks for playing along. You could have you took a pass on that, but you decided to share your, your message with folks that are out there right now. And then that's how life is. What does that mean to you? Well, maybe you've never played football. Maybe you never had an injury, but maybe you're going through a health challenge right now. Maybe a family member is going through a financial challenge. Maybe there's a relationship challenge that's going on. You can take any one of these ideas and you can use that right now, the core values, the mindset, your business needs that you need, and you can change your life. I think it's been said before, but it's so important. If you don't like your life, change it. If you don't like your health, change it. If you don't like your finances, you can change it. With that being said, we're going to go over to the one and only that kicked us off, Loretta, and we're going to ask each of them uh, to take at least 60 seconds and tell us what line of business are they in? Don't you want to know if they're in business? And number two, what type of clients do they work with? Wouldn't you want to know? And then last, in that 60 seconds or less, how can you best connect with them? Like, how can you stay in this conversation with them over and beyond today? So they're going to answer three questions that you might have that I have, which is, what do they do? What line of business are they in? Number two, what type of clients do they work with if they work with any clients? And number three, how can you best connect with them so you can stay in this conversation over and beyond today? We'll go with Loretta, and then we'll go to Jim and Michelle, and then we'll go over to Art. So Loretta, take it away, please. Yeah, so I'm a prominent family entrepreneur expert. So basically what that means is I help parents and families start businesses so that they can have more freedom, fulfillment, and flexibility. So if you've always wanted to learn how to start your own business and involve your family, or if you just simply want some additional coaching with parenting and having a family that thrives and not just survive, then I am the one that you want to have a conversation with. I love working with parents. I love working with families. And especially if you have an interest in business ownership, how you can contact me, I make it very simple for you. Just go to coachwithmama.com. That's coachwithmama.com, coachwithmama.com. That's my scheduling link. And you can set up what I call a parent power strategy session. You and me, we'll just talk. We'll have a conversation. I can see how I can best guide you in a 30-minute time slot and see whether or not what we can do to move forward to help your family thrive. If you have any questions about business ownership or how to start a business, we can chat about that too. But just go to coachwithmama.com and I'll be happy to have a conversation with you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Over to you, Jim and Michelle. Well, our company, A Teague of Your Own, Mm -hmm. we help you lead to succeed, communicate to elevate, and build teams to fulfill dreams. And we do that through speaking, coaching, and training. We work with individuals and we work with organizations to help them grow from where they are to where they want to be. Uh, and the the easiest way to get a hold of us, really, I'm perfectly fine going old school. Text me your name to 412-420-7975. That's right. Just text me your name to 412-420-7975. We will get in contact with you if you've got questions about, you know, trying to figure out what your core values are, if you're not quite sure what your purpose is, if you're, you need help being held accountable for your goals, or you, you need to brush up on leadership skills or communication skills, uh, reach out to us. Like I said, uh, just text us uh, what your name is to 412-420-7975, and we will help you. Mm, fantastic. I think that's new school, not old school. I think it's new school to be able to text us. That's new school, not old school. It's, it's new okay. school. That's good stuff. Good stuff. It's the most powerful, <laughs> most effective way for them to communicate with you. Good stuff. There All we right. Go. Now over to the one and only uh, Art. Talk to us, Art. Hey. You, I'm an educator, I'm a football coach, 
14 years. I've been teaching for over a decade. I also have my Winner's Mindset Success Academy. I work with from the professional athlete to the college student athlete and to the person who wants to start their own business and be an entrepreneur themselves. And I help them reach those goals. I help them envision. I help them believe in themselves and take that belief to a different level through daily ritual routines from the morning and at night. So I do those very things. I teach them these tools and strategy, strategy that has helped me fulfill my purpose in, in my life. And I'm also a motivational speaker. I also coach coaches. So I do I do the leadership program as well where I help other coaches become the best coach they can be, especially within the athletic realm. Other I, I, I help other head coaches, other football pro coaches who want to really elevate their style of leadership and understand what it really means to be called coach. Because my my Angela said it best. She said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And in my business, I'm in the relationship business on a daily basis, right? So I'm very passionate about that. I'm good at it. And 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 that's, that's why, if you want to connect with me, Instagram is probably one of my biggest platforms I use, at Coach A. Berlanga. Again, Instagram at, at Coach A. Berlanga, at Coach A. Berlanga. Yes, that's so well, three times. Great job, great job. He says, I'm also a dad, by the way. Y'all can hear. <laughs> he's like, he's so focused. He's like, <laughs> we can't make these stories up, ladies and gentlemen. We just cannot make this stuff. Uh, we are alive, and this is, it is what it's all about, family and life happening real time. All right, with the, what we're going to do now is we close out. Um, I've asked each of them if they'll take a, a, about two minutes and, and kind of share whatever their final thoughts are. Um, if you're out there right now, hit the share button. Hit the watch party button right now. Like, take a moment, just hit the share button, hit the watch party button, and just pay this message forward to someone else so you can help empower them. You can help inspire them and help them go to an entirely different level. We'll, um, we'll, we'll go the way we start out, keep it in order, keep it really easy for everyone. Is we'll start with Loretta, and she'll be able to share her, her closing comments to empower, to inspire you. And uh, then we'll have Jim and Michelle share whatever final thoughts they have. It'll be two minutes or less. And then we'll go to Art, and he'll close us out as well with his final thoughts and comments. And you, as you're listening, right, tune in. Like, like lean forward and say, wow, as I get ready to leave right now, and I've got to go do what has to get done, what are they sharing with me that I can take away with right now? Be present. All right, Loretta, over to you. Thanks a lot for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. You all are amazing. You all are incredible. You all are champions. But more importantly, you're people of service, and that's what you've done to this evening. So thank you so much. You know, this evening we've talked a lot about uh, overcoming. And uh, I also host a podcast called I Am Love Movement, where I interview parents and entrepreneurs who have overcome tragedy through love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And so it is important for you to live your life to the fullest and live your biggest and best life. I think that is so important because, you know, tomorrow's not promised. And you want to lead by example for yourself, for your family, for legacy. So I'll leave you with this. My tagline for my business is love yourself first. You got to have your cup to overflow for yourself so that it gives you the ability to add value and serve others. I want to help show you how to do that. It's been a pleasure, Shay and the other panelists. Thank you for this time this evening. It's been a blast. And I look forward to having conversations with parents and entrepreneurs so I can help your families thrive, not just survive. Thank you so much, Loretta. We certainly appreciate that. Over to you, Jim and Michelle coming together as a, as a tag team, as a, as a, as a couple. I, I think it's the I think it's uh, outside of Eric and Sakisha. First time we've, we've had this happen, so it's pretty cool. It's good oh, to, oh good wow. to be working together. Well, we're glad to know we're groundbreakers. Yes, wow, we're, we're making history for you. We're, well, thank you, it's and never that, a dull thank moment. you for. It's never a dull moment. The older I get, the shorter <laughs> my list of things that I thought would never happen happens. I'm just messing with you. Uh -huh. Yeah, but go ahead, Thanks take it away. So much for. Thank you for inviting us on here. And um, what did you want to share with them? Wanted to share with you, again, what we do. Okay. 
We help people lead to succeed, communicate to elevate, and build teams to fulfill dreams. And we can help you. We can help you as an individual. We can help your organization. And we're here to serve. We want to help you go from where you are to where you want to be. All you have to do is have that courage to reach out to us mm -hmm. and we will help you on your path. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's a journey um, and it's not always going to be easy, but we're there for you and we're there to, to help you through those downtimes and to help raise you up and to help you celebrate what it is that you do achieve. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. And Art, your closing comments. I love the story I've been told many years ago, and I share this often when I get a chance to, and there was this chicken farmer and he came across this eaglet egg and he looked around for its nest and there wasn't a home in sight. He couldn't find it, the nearby family member, a parent or mom. So he decided to pick this eagle egg, egg up with him and take it back to his chicken farm and raise it amongst his chickens. So he did that. So the weeks turned into months, the months turned to years, and this baby eagle turned to be a mature adult. So it became his very environment. He pecked for worms. He would fly just a few feet, just as chickens do, and then fall to the ground. One day, he looks up to the sky, and he sees this beautiful, majestic bird soaring above the farm. And he asks his chicken buddy, he says, who is that? What is that? And he says, oh, that's an eagle. They're the birds of the sky. But us, we're just chickens. We're the birds of the ground. And that didn't sit well with him. It, it, it created this yearning, this desire that he knew he wanted more. He can do more. He just didn't know how about go about going doing it. And then he reflected on his life. He said, is this, is this who I am? Is this all my life is to be? So right then and there, he decided, I need to make a decision. Do I continue to live my life as I've always lived it? Or do I step outside my comfort zone? And do I soar? And do I fly? So that's what he did. He backed up and he flapped his wings as hard and as fast as he could. And he took off and he flew. And his life was changed forever. So many people who are tuning in right now, or watch it on the replay. There's some certain decisions you need to make. Maybe you need to restore your marriage, restore your family. Maybe you need to work on yourself. Stop caring about what other people think about you and start believing in yourself and what you think about you, right? So that's my message. My name is Art Berlanga, and they call me Coach B. Coach B, certainly appreciate you, Mama Vega. Mama Vega. Um, appreciate you okay. as well. I can say, I think I'm saying Charmaine, but I can't say it. Mama so wisdom. <laughs> yeah, the wisdom, mama, where's the wisdom? So much, thank you so much. And also, Jim and Michelle, thank you so much. And thank you for watching at home. Thank you for sharing this message forward. Thank you for being a part of this. We know you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. And mm -hmm. you give us the most precious resource you have. I want you to know that you're a winner that you're a champion and for you as you listen in, you can take any one of these lessons, you can apply them and you can create your own January 1st because today is your January 1st. So go ahead and put your sunglasses on. The, the future is very, very bright and for you, the best is still yet to come. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. With that being said, my name, by the way, for anyone that cares, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we're going to make some good things happen. We connect again next time. Remember this, though. Time is long. Life, on the other hand, well, it's very, very short. So you got to live in the moment, and you got to make it count. God bless me. Wish you success. Thank you all. We appreciate every one of you. Thank you for joining in. We are amazing. You're incredible. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>